Hey, my dear warriors, it's Victoria coming to you tonight to share a little bit about the healing power of Huga as we head into the holidays. You know, I'd really like to support you with some tools over this Christmas and the holiday season. So I just wanted to read some excerpts out of one of my all time favorite books during my recovery, and it's the little book of Huga. And it is profound, really, Danish Secrets to Happy Living. And this has transformed my life. And as a brain retrainer, and as brain retrainers out there, we know that it's so important to get our bodies into a healing state. And that includes safety because the, bo you know, the body is in that limbic system, fight or flight. And there is no better way to do it, in my opinion, is incorporating huga into your life. So I'm just going to read to you a little bit about what it is, and it would be a wonderful book if you want to pick it up or listen to it on audiobook during the holidays. I think it would really enhance your holidays, no matter what level of recovery you're at. If you're bed bound, this could just have a profound effect. And if you're busy, but trying to pace with activities, it's also going to help you make some really good choices that are going to support you. So let's go ahead and dive in. It's just going to be story time. And so here we go. I've just picked out, as you can see, all my little colorful marks there, just to give you an idea of what Huga is. And after this, I'm going to do another video and go ahead and drop it at the same time with a Huga meditation so we can actually practice getting into a Huga state. And so this, the guy who wrote this is he actually researches happiness. Isn't that a great thing? And he's from Denmark and Denmark is always ranked as one of the top happiest nations on the planet. So he writes, Huga has been called every thing from the art of creating intimacy to coziness of the soul and the absence of annoyance to taking pleasure from the presence of soothing things, cozy togetherness, and his personal, personal favorite, Coco by Candlelight. Huga is about an atmosphere and an experience rather than about things. It is about being with the people we love, a feeling of home, a feeling that we are safe, that we are shielded from the world and allow ourselves to let our guard down or just be comfortable in each other's silent company, or simply just be by yourself, enjoying a cup of tea. So who can be done whether you're with people or you're alone. We are all tired. After, so he gives this little vision of a very Huga moment that he had. He was spending the weekend with some friends at an old cabin. They'd been out skiing and they came back in to get the fire going. Oh, they were hiking. He says, we were all tired after hiking and were half asleep, sitting in a semicircle around the fireplace in the cabin, wearing big sweaters and woolen socks. The only sounds you could hear were the stew boiling, the sparks from the fireplace, and someone having a sip of mulled wine. Then one of my friends broke the silence. Could this be any more huga? He asked rhetorically. Yes, one of the women said after a moment, if there was a storm raging outside, we all nodded. So we're going to explore a little bit more. And as I say, it's just a fascinating way to incorporate healing vibes into your day. And let's see, the next one is about the next chapter is about light. Light is very important in Huga, creating an ambiance that's really soothing to the soul. And he says, no recipe for Huga is complete without candles. When Danes are asked what they most associate with Huga, an overwhelming 85% will mention candles. It is kind of an emotional happiness, an emotional coziness, a hug without arms. I think we could all use that, right? So here's the Huga Manifesto. I'll just show you this picture. It's a very cute picture in the book. And the first one is atmosphere, turn down the lights. The second one is presence. Be here now, turn off the phones. Three is pleasure. There's a lot of food involved with Huga. Coffee, chocolates, cookies, cakes, candy. Gimme, gimme, gimme. 
Number four, equality. We over me share the tasks and the airtime. Five is gratitude. Take it in. Notice the blessings. Six, harmony. It's not a competition. We already like you. There is no need to brag about your achievements. Seven is comfort. Get comfy. Take a break. It's all about relaxation. And if you haven't done this already, I hope that you will go ahead and cozy up under the covers while I'm reading to you. Just really enjoy this time of just learning about Huga. So number eight is a truce. No drama. Let's discuss politics another day. Nine, togetherness. Build relationships and narratives. Do you remember the time that we dot, dot, dot. Number 10 is shelter. This is your tribe. This is the place of peace and security. So you can see how all of this, when you begin to create this intentionally in your life, it just adds so much to the healing factor of your body because your body gets into, a, you know, that relaxed state. Um, so I would say for me, this has been huge in my recovery and not only my recovery, but post CFS really enjoying life, like really loving and, 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 and just, um, how do I say, just enjoying the moment, savoring life in a sense. So by being intentional, we can really do that. So let's see the next one I love. And I think this would be really helpful for any of you that are bed bound. Um, but any of us that are struggling, this might be a really good idea. It's called the Huga Emergency Kit. And, you know, this would be especially important during the holidays because we have so much that can be coming at us or we can be feeling really sad because we're not participating in the normal activities that we used to. And you know what? There are ways to bring that joy and that sense of uh just, you know, holiday cheer, even in bad, there are ways to do it. You know, if you want to put a little Christmas tree, a little whatever, just little things in your room. I love fairy lights, little things that just bring that um, into your space so that you can enjoy them. So a Huga emergency kit is you might consider building a Huga emergency kit stored up for those evenings when you are low on energy, have no plans and don't feel like going out and are in the mood for some quality time alone. Have a box, a cupboard, or a suitcase filled with Huga essentials. Some candles is number one. Some good quality chocolate. Number three is your favorite tea. Number four is your favorite book. It might even be this little Huga book. Number five, your favorite film or TV series. Number six is jam. Number seven, a good pair of woolen socks. Eight, a, a selection of your favorite letters. Nine, a warm sweater. Ten, a notebook. And I just want to read this little section to you. We may call this your Huga journal. The first exercise is to note down some of the most hoogalig moments you've experienced in the past month or year. This will allow you to enjoy them again. Sounds a little like brain retraining, doesn't it? Or my capture and bottle it technique. Think of what kind of hoogalig experiences you would like to have in the future. This could be a bucket list of hooga, if you will. Number 11 is a nice blanket. 12, a paper and pen. 13, oh, he talks about taking time to write a handwritten letter. Think of someone who you're grateful for to have in your life and write to them to tell them why. 13, music. 14, a photo album. So those are some great ideas. And if I haven't mentioned this, the reason why he wrote this, of course, is because the Danes are so well known for their happiness and their, <laughs> I hope I introduced this with it, but Huga is such an important part of their culture. And so as a researcher in happiness, he really came to, to realize that Huga is so, you know, important in their culture and that it contributes so much to their happiness. And so I think this part, I'm going to skip one. We're going to come back to it. 
but it's, I have come to realize that Huga may function as a driver for happiness on an everyday basis. Huga gives us the language, the objective, and the methods for planning and preserving happiness and for getting a little bit of it every day. But Huga is also about making the most of what we have in abundance every day. Perhaps Benjamin Franklin said it best. Happiness consists more in small conveniences or pleasures that occur every day than in great pieces of good fortune that happen, but seldom. So I'm going to go back to the part that I skipped and we're going to go, I'm going to go ahead and close out in a minute. And this, we're going to go to another video and I'm going to go into, it's called the five dimensions of Huga. And then, like I said, we'll do a little uh, meditation around it to just help you ease into that. And it's just my hope for you that this season, you can really dip into some wonderful states that will support you, that you can surround yourself with ideas of Huga so that you can really encourage yourself through this season and feel happy and enjoy it. Because I know that when you're facing such a difficult challenge like chronic fatigue syndrome, you know, sometimes that seems few and far between, but I found that when I began to implement Huga in my life, that it really fed my soul and it turned what was such a difficult challenge into like something that was manageable and that I could actually enjoy my recovery. I mean, that was really what happened. It was like, it's turning something that's so difficult into something that you can actually begin to savor because you, you know, you're coming out of it. You know, even though you have your challenges and doubts as I did, but as you look towards coming out of it, you're able to enjoy. And like I said, after recovery, this will be such an enhancement to your life. So anyway, with that warriors, I'm going to shut up and go to the other video. So thanks for listening. And I wish you the very best this season. And I speak life, health, and wholeness over you.